let's talk about on her. Um, this is to most ADCs as well, if there's no intelligence scaling. So the big thing with on her is, uh, he has no intelligence scaling. Like, at all. Even his slow from his pillar doesn't scale with intelligence too. Obviously, it's just pure strength, pure strength, and pure strength, right? Across the board. So, no int items needed for uh, on her. Um, I was just playing around with builds, uh, making sure that info is okay. The thing that sucks, um, testing things in this jungle practice in the alpha, is that all these bots have zero prots, essentially. So your strength value is what you're going to be auto-wing for on the left. Um, I'm unsure if there was a way to change it, but it doesn't seem to be. But that means that pen is super hard to <clears throat> test other than using a Google Doc. And uh, I think while it is viable, for example, I'm still doing stuff here. Um, it's... I think bad for a player to get the feel because the numbers can look good, but how long until you reach those numbers? For example, if you build an executioner, how long does five basics actually feel until you hit 50% pen? Versus like, let's just say, uh, Titan's Bane, where bang, straight away, you've more lost 20 pen speed. at level 20, you know? Which one's more effective in like a fight? Obviously it depends who you're fighting, etc., etc. Is five autos too much? Like, are you just wasting how much pen? Should you just get Serpent's Fang or Serpent's Spear, sorry, for 30% all the time on everything? There's so many questions to uh, figure out. But with on her, what I'll do is I'll just show you a couple builds. These two items are core. Bloodforge Blade, Chin's Blade. Sucks that they're both blades. Once again, if you haven't watched any other videos, when it comes to the Bloodforge versus the Reaper, I think Bloodforge being cheaper gives it an edge, and Bloodforge also having an active that you're able to activate at any time is super, super nice uh, for defensive plus offensive purposes, right? Next up, Chin's Blade. Chin's is 6% of max HP on, <laughs> like, basic attacks, which is ridiculous. That's at 300 you see there to the right. Absolutely broken. Um, it doesn't scale with HP. It doesn't scale up to anything. It's just constantly 6%, so... Yeah, definitely need that in every build. <clears throat> and I would, honestly, probably get a second. Why not? It's just 6% every auto. You can kind of argue that you can go out of Lanthers, maybe, and, like, strafe, but I think that's kind of crazy. I think chin size is the play. Now, here, with chins, there's this whole smart history of you never go chins plus crit um, due to a certain caster saying that is the truth. Um, I'm going to show the pen build and stay true to that. So Dagger of Frenzy. This is Frenzy on an ADC item. Uh, pretty expensive, but it's 2,900 gold base. But when you press this button, it goes to a 7,000 gold item. All right, that's how good these stats are here. So as soon as you activate Frenzy, look, 156 on auto wing 4. I'll be auto wing for a bit more, plus my attack speed will go up as well. So 216, and my attack speed goes up. Uh, incredibly hard to lose a trade with Chins and Dagger of Frenzy and some uh, Lifesteal. So these three items are pretty much set for boxing, you know, or set for surviving ganks. Now, outside of that, we're going to get off strength. We're going to go straight to attack speed. We might put both on. Um, I really like Sunbeam Bow because it's like 150% cost effective. The only thing is, there's no crit, there's no on hit, there's no nothing, but I think that's still fine. It's just more strength, more attack speed. And remember, on her 100% strength scaling, you don't really need necessarily too many on hits, you just want strength. Now, this is the weird part, and I've like been thinking quite a bit about actually being 50% pan is obviously really good into tanks. So if they have tanks, grab an executioner. But if they don't have tanks, there's an item that I'm kind of like been looking at. That's probably slept on. It's another 55 strength, right? So if there's only one tank in the game, if they're playing something like Zeus Solo in your playtest and they're going full damage, grab this. Why not try it out? So if you pop the Avatar plus the Dagger of Frenzy, so look, 260 is my base auto, pop both at the same time, I go to 380, right? <coughs> very strong. Obviously, this is very greedy. Most games, you won't be able to go Avatar, so you probably will need to go XE. They should fear me now. Right? For pen. 
and then your last item. You probably, honestly, I've kind of been loving this because it's just move speed. It's 20% move speed on Adelina's boat, and normally I'm actually grabbing a third, and I might be grabbing dual swords with it, so it's 50% move speed at all the time if you crit. But we'll have to, like, test this sixth item. With this, you don't need any more pen, right? You just want a bow item. So you probably do want Atalantas, but it feels pretty weak at the end of the game. Honestly, Blink isn't a bad option if you haven't got a Blink. Another option, like a defensive option, as your last item. It could be a Reaper. This will just give you, like, ridiculous survivability super late game with double life still. If you do get low, you're able to, like, hit that 50% threshold that Reaper gives. So once you hit an enemy god below 50%, you get more life still, right? So if you're boxing, you're boxing, you're boxing, and you're both, you know, pretty even, you're able to plop blood, plop blood Forge at the same time, pop your Relic, and honestly, after a fight at this uh, attack speed, and if you win, you should be able to uh, life still pretty high up. Four seconds, you know? And then after fights... If things calm down, like there's a big team fight, you barely live, you know, there's two of you alive, there's two of them alive, head off to a camp, farm it up, you'll have more sustain, you're able to stay on the map a little bit longer. But once again, hypotheticals, hypotheticals, hypotheticals. Um, honestly, it could be anything. Here's another one. They should fear you need anti-heal. Brawlers is 50 strength, nothing to sneeze at, that's huge. Probably very viable, right? Most games, you're going to need some anti-heal. Um, don't grab any ins, right? We'll go back to the strength. Serpent's Fang. Oh, Serpent's Sphere. Remember, I do not get Serpent's Spear and Executioner at the same time. I think that's the massive misplay. I mean, like, the only misplay. If you want more strength and some cooldown, Tekakagi is decent when it comes to MS and, like, 25% cooldown rate. But in my opinion, the attack speed is probably more effective from Atalanta's bow. So... You probably look at Atalanta's over Tekakagi. Uh, if you do want some crit, why not just grab a Baneful Rapier? You know, that's a lot of attack speed. If you do hit a crit, it can uh, help with your objective DPS as well. Yeah. It's pretty cost efficient to me. Um, other than that, there's no real tech with Arnher. The builds can, you know, go absolutely everywhere. Um, I'll just get to level 5 real quick. And we will... Talk about any differences in Arnher versus um, Smite 1 and Smite 2, okay? So, <clears throat> the big difference being his ult, we'll come over here. It's a channel, and then the last throw of the ult um, is hyperscaling, like, it's a lot more, the so... Bang. 276, you saw. Now the this sand. first one. 148, 148, 148. And then 276. So it's double damage on the spear. So one of the reasons I think Blink's pretty good is let's just say there's a team fight. You get engaged on, you jump away. It actually looks starts to look good. You're able to the like sand. cover what 25 meters? And I was behind it. So you can cover 30 meters with your ult and your blink. If things look good, if people start disengaging and they're super low, and you're able to get back into a fight after, you know, making a misplay or such. Um, another thing is, most people, once again, let's just say Neath or Kern, any ADC, right? You're here, you're fighting, and as soon as you start ulting, they're probably going to turn and run away. Behold once they run away, the blink and hit the big shot, you know what I mean? So, the first couple throws of your ult... The sand. Drink and nothing compared to that final spear, right? So that's why I think Blink does have some merit on Arno. Make sure you do get it late, because I think late game, it's a, it's honestly like another defensive relic. People are saying that uh, Aegis is out of the game. Combat Blink is pretty much, in my opinion, the egg. It's so annoying to jump on someone. Like, we saw a lot of Anubis tech close beta against uh, one of the devs. Uh, closed out for sorry. And now I'm seeing some Anubis, some Zeus and everything with Blink, and it's very frustrating as a support player, as a solo laner, to dive a backliner, let's say I'm diving this in the air, using everything to get on top of him, and he just blinks away. And it's just like, well, that sucks. I could see a meta where everybody does have this item, to be fair. Everyone should just have it. It's flash, it's broken. Three minutes cooldown instead of a five minute cooldown. Very strong. Uh, more tech here. 
I didn't know that you could put a bar on you, right? Like a mere wall. So we'll go back over. If someone's chasing you, put it down. If someone's chasing you, you're able to do this. You don't need to do the smite one, um, like, you know, when you're running away from someone and you quickly do that one. Don't need to do it. Point it at your feet, it'll spawn behind you. Um, and then another thing with the pillar is if you're fighting someone, let's just say I'm boxing a mirror, and I want a pillar in between us to get like a body block, there is a cast time. Like, it's very small, but just you have to be, it doesn't just sit there and insta spawn. You have to uh, be ready for it. Another thing, let's see. Um, if he was backing, I don't know if this is intended or not, but moving people with pillar doesn't stop back anymore, so you're able to back in front of an arm here. Um, that's it. That's my little yap done. I don't think there's much to talk about when it comes to Arno specifically. You know, obviously he's still the same. That was kind of a bug. I'm not sure what that is. But yeah, I think Arno compared to all the other ADCs is better. I think Kurtonos is weak as hell in the ADC role because he has int scaling, Neath also has intelligence scaling, and then Arnher is just a pure strength powerhouse. So he just has it over them. Just because everything scales and he just uses all these items like super well. Obviously other ADCs are completely fine, but I just think when you put all of this together with all of these items, it's just too nice. Plus his passive is still physical protection is being reduced. We didn't talk about that, but yeah, that's unfortunate, isn't it? Anyway, that's on her.